Good afternoon everyone. We are the group 5 reporters. We will going to discuss about the Cavite mutiny. I am Russell Ansi de Coco with my co-reporter Joyce Faith Marata. So, what happened in the Cavite mutiny? The year 1872 is a historic year of two events, the Cavite mutiny and the martyrdom of three priests, Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, later on immortalized as Gumburza. These events are very important milestones in Philippine history and have caused ripples throughout time, directly influencing the decisive events of the Philippine Revolution toward the end of the century. Cavite mutiny played a role in awakening nationalism among the Filipinos of that time. Now, these Spanish accounts of the Cavite mutiny are from Jose Montero E. Vidal and Governor General Rafael Izguerdo. The documentation of Spanish historian Jose Montero E. Vidal centered on how the event was an attempt in overthrowing the Spanish government in the Philippines. Although regarded as a historian, his account of the mutiny was criticized as woefully biased and rabid for a scholar. While another account from the official report written by then Governor General Rafael Izquierdo implicated the native clergy who were then active in the movement towards secularization of parishes. So, these two accounts corroborated each other. According to the primary source, excerpts from Montero's account of the Cavite mutiny, the abolition of privileges enjoyed by the laborers of the Cavite arsenal of exemption from the tribute was, according to some, the cause of the insurrection. There were, however, other causes. And here's the following. The Spanish Revolution, which overthrew a secular throne. The propaganda carried on by an unbridled press against monarchical principles attentatory of the most sacred respects towards the dethroned majesty. The democratic and republican books and pamphlets, the speeches and preachings of the apostles of these new ideas in Spain, and the outburst of the American publicist and the criminal policy of the senseless governor, whom the revolutionary government sent to govern the Philippines and who put into practice these ideas were the determining circumstances which gave rise among certain Filipinos to the idea of attaining their independence. And it was towards this school that they started to work with the powerful assistance of a certain section of the native clergy who out of spite toward friars and made common cause with the enemies of the mother country. Now the principal leaders either met in the house of Filipino Spaniard D. Joaquin Pardo de Tavera or in that of the native priest Jacinto Zamora and these meetings were usually attended by the curate of Bacoor Mariano Gomez. Because at various times, but especially in the beginning of year 1872, the authorities received anonymous communications with the information that a great uprising would break out against the Spaniards. The minute the fleet of Cavite left for the south and that all would be assassinated, including the friars. But nobody gave importance to these notices. The conspiracy had been going on since the days of La Torre with utmost secrecy. While according to the primary source, excerpts from the official report of Governor Izquierdo on the Cavite Mutiny of 1872, it seems definite that the insurrection was motivated and prepared by the native clergy, by the mestizos and native lawyers, and by those known here as abogadillos and that the instigators protested against the injustice of the government in not paying the provinces for their tobacco crop and against the usury that some practice in documents. They also encouraged the rebellion by protesting what they called the injustice of having obliged the workers in the Cavite arsenal to pay tribute starting January 1 and to render personal service from which they were formally exempted. And now the reason for the revolution is that the abolition of privileges enjoyed by the workers of the Cavite arsenal such as exemption from payment of tribute and being employed in polos y servicios or forced labor. They also identified other reasons which seemingly made the issue a lot more serious which included the presence of the native clergy who out of spite against the Spanish friars conspired and supported the rebels. Esquerdo, in an obviously biased report, highlighted that 
attempt to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines to install a new hari in the persons of fathers Burgos and Zamora. According to him, native clergy attracted supporters by giving them charismatic assurance that their fight would not fail because they had God's support, aside from promises of lofty rewards such as employment, wealth, and ranks in the army. While in the Spaniards' accounts, the event of 1872 was premeditated and was part of a big conspiracy among the educated leaders, mestizos, lawyers, and residents of Manila and Cavite, they allegedly planned to liquidate high-ranking Spanish officers, then kill the friars. The signal they identified among these conspirators of Manila and Cavite was the rockets fired from Intramuros. Now, the accounts detail that on January 20, 1872, the district of Sampaloc celebrated the Feast of the Virgin of Loreto and came with it where some fireworks displayed. Signals to the rebels in Cavite was skyrockets as agreed, but Cavitenos allegedly mistook the fireworks display to commence with the attack. The 200 band contingent led by Sergeant La Madrid attacked Spanish officers at sight and seized the arsenal. Esquerdo, upon learning of the attack, ordered the reinforcement of the Spanish forces in Cavite to quell the revolt. The revolution was easily crushed when the Manileños, who were expected to aid the Caviteños, did not arrive. Leaders of the plot were killed in the resulting skirmish, while fathers Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora were tried by a court-martial and sentenced to be executed. Others who were implicated, such as Joaquin Pardo de Tavera, Antonio Maria Regidor, Jose and Pio Basa, and other Filipino lawyers were suspended from the practice of law, arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment at the Marianas Island. And on February 17, 1872, the Gumburza were executed to serve as a threat to Filipinos never to attempt to fight the Spaniards again. Differing accounts of the events of 1872, two other primary accounts exist that seem to counter the accounts of Vizcardo and Montero. First, the account of Dr. Trinidad Hermenegildo Pardo de Tavera, a Filipino scholar and researcher who wrote a Filipino version of a bloody incident in Cavite. From the excerpts of Pardo de Tavera's account of the Cavite mutiny, this uprising among the soldiers in Cavite was used as a powerful level by the Spanish residents and by the friars. The central government in Madrid had announced its intention to deprive the friars in these islands of powers of intervention in matters of civil government and of the direction and management of the university. It was due to these facts and promises that the Filipinos had great hopes of an improvement in the affairs of their country, while the friars, on the other hand, feared that their power in the colony would soon be complete a thing of the past. Up to that time, there had been no intention of secession from Spain and the only aspiration of the people was to secure the material and education advancement of the country. According to this account, the incident was merely a mutiny by Filipino soldiers and laborers of the Cavite arsenal to the dissatisfaction arising from the draconian policy of, policies of Izquierdo, such as the abolition of privileges and the prohibition of the founding of the School of Arts and Trades for Filipinos which the general saw was a smokescreen to creating a, poli a political club. Tavera is of the opinion that the Spanish friars and Izquierdo used the Cavite mutiny as a way to address other is issues by blowing out of proportion the isolated mutiny attempt. During this time, the central government in Madrid was planning to deprive the friars of all the powers of intervention in matters of civil government and direction and management of educational institutions. The friars needed something to justify their continuing dominance in the country, and the mutiny provided such opportunity. However, the central Spanish government introduced an educational decree fusing secretarian schools run by the friars into a school called the Philippine Institute. The decree aimed to improve the standard of education in the Philippines by requiring teaching positions in the schools to be filled by competitive examinations, an improvement welcomed by most Filipinos. 
Another account this time by French writer Edmond Pouchot complemented Tavera's account and analyzed the motivations of the 1872 Cavite mutiny. General Latorre created a junta composed of high officials, including some friars and six Spanish officials. At the same time, there was created by the government in Madrid a committee to investigate the same problems submitted to the Manila. When the two finished work, it was found that they came to the same conclusions. Here is a summary of the reforms they considered necessary to introduce. 1. Changes in tariff rates at customs and the methods of collection. 2. Removal of surcharges on foreign importations. 3. Reduction of expertise. 4. Permission for foreigners to reside in the Philippines, buy real estate, enjoy freedom of worship, and operate commercial transports flying the Spanish flag. 5. Establishment of an advisory council to inform the Minister of Overseas Affairs in Madrid on the necessary reforms to be implemented. 6. Changes in primary and secondary education. 7. Establishment of an Institute of Civil Administration in the Philippines, rendering unnecessary the sending home of short-term civil officials every time there is a change in ministry. 8. Study of the rec tax system. and 9. Abolition of the tobacco monopoly. The arrival in Manila of General Izquierdo put a sudden end to all dreams of reforms. The prosecutions instituted by the new Governor General were probably expected as a result of the bitter disputes between the Filipino clerics and the friars. Such a policy must really end in a strong desire on the part of the other to repress cruelly. In regard to schools, it was previously decreed that there should be in Manila a Society of Arts and Trades to be opened in March of 1871. To repress the growth of liberal teachings, General Izguerdo suspended the opening of the school the day previous to the scheduled inauguration. The Filipinos had a duty to render service on public roads construction and pay taxes every year, but those who were employed at the maestranza of the artillery in the engineering shops in the arsenal of Cavite were exempted from this obligation from time immemorial. Without preliminaries of any kind, a decree by the governor withdrew from such old employees the retirement privileges and declassified them into ranks of those who work on public roads. The friars used the incident as a part of a larger conspiracy to cement their dominance, which had started to show cracks because of the discontent of the Filipinos. They showcased the mutiny as a part of a greater conspiracy in the Philippines by Filipinos to overthrow the Spanish government. Unintentionally and more so prophetically, the Cavite mutiny of 1872 resulted in the martyrdom of Comborza and paved the way to the revolution culminating in 1898.